So a great question you might be asking yourself is how long does it take to have a really fantastic dating life? Well, I'm going to address that in this video as this is something that I think a lot of guys tend to ponder and waste a lot of time over. And it tends to be a distraction from actually getting on and making those necessary changes. I think it's very easy to just sit and complain and say, oh, how many years is it going to take? How much effort and whatnot am I going to do? And that tends to be a bit of a distraction. And in the time that you probably could have, uh, uh, well, in the months that probably go by, you know, wondering what steps to do, you probably could have done like half of the things necessary to change your life. So I'm going to address a few things in this video. And as you can see here, I've got a spider diagram uh, highlighting particular areas of dating. And these are things that I think are going to help you to improve your confidence, uh, certainly make you more sociable and most importantly, make you so much more attractive to the women that you're going out to date. And these elements are part of what I would call building an attractive lifestyle. Now, if you're someone who has certainly watched a lot of dating advice over the last 10 years with dating coaches, it is very likely that you have heard the phrase attractive lifestyle from some of my clients. And it's because I am a heavy believer that if you want to have a really fantastic dating life, you can't just necessarily focus on cold approaching or just trying to meet women to fix all of your problems. You have to work on other areas of your life too. And so I've got kind of a number of things on here. And the only two that I've left out are things to do with a job, so your business, whether you're employed, self-employed and so on, because I think that can certainly uh, change the complexity with how long it can take to do things. And same as well if you've got any particular kind of traumas as well, because that could then be looking down at different therapies that maybe perhaps that you need, or maybe you need to be considering things like meditation. Now, I can certainly end up doing videos and uh, maybe even I might actually include them in this uh, without actually having them on the diagram, but I have just left them out because they are more of a, a case by case basis, like depending on then how much free time you probably do have. And what I've got here are just the things that you could literally go out and do tomorrow and already start implementing and changing your life for the better and certainly, and hopefully, fingers crossed, getting you a much better dating life. Uh, so what I want to do is I'm going to go through each of these and I'm going to just discuss with you uh, some considerations on how long it would probably take for you to do each of these things. And then hopefully by the end of this, as a summary, I can give you kind of like a rough estimate of how long it would take, whether you've got plenty of time in the world to focus on fixing your dating life or if you've only got maybe a little bit of time, especially if you are uh, doing long hours at work or if you're employed or whatever. So I think as a starting point, let's, let's go with fitness. Let's do fitness first. Why not? So fitness, in fact, let's, let's move like that, like that, because otherwise it's going to keep going off the screen. So one of the great things really with, you know, having re doing regular exercise, doing lots of training and whatnot, is that it makes you feel good about yourself on a very simplistic level. It makes you feel really good about yourself and it can help you to build confidence. And certainly depending on what your fitness goals are, like some people, they just like to have really good cardio. Some want to have like a really chiseled physique, depending on what your goals are you're going to then appear physically attractive to a particular kind of woman that you want to be attracting. So I think most men, it's safe to say, when they get into fitness, they want to get that chisel physique. You know, they're not just looking to maybe run like half marathons or marathons. They want to have the muscles. They want to have the uh, the chiseled abs, you know, and the, uh, the strong jawline and so on. So how long does it take to really make 
those big changes in your fitness life? Well, I've over the years, I've actually done a lot of fitness challenges. So I have a really good sense of uh, how much time you can be um, uh, at the minimal spending to be getting like the best results possible. And to be honest, with most or if not all of the different fitness challenges that I've done, it on average has taken between uh, maybe not three to six months, but I'd probably say between four to six months to get the body or the physique that I've always wanted. But it's not necessarily just about the fitness with that, because you can't be just devouring pizzas all the time and uh, and thinking like, OK, well, I'll just train like three hours a day in the gym, seven days a week, and that will change my life and I'll, I'll have the, the body. I've done fitness programs where I, well, for one, I tried to enter into a bodybuilding competition. I did really well getting close for that. But because of on that particular program, I didn't have a very strict diet. And so even though I was spending hours upon hours in the gym, I wasn't really cutting my body fat percentage down. It was low, but it wasn't as low as I was like hoping for. So I got really sort of big and bulky with that, which was great. And I was lifting weights that were like double and triple like my own body weight. So it was amazing to really, really put the the hard work and effort into that and really see some results. And certainly, in fact, the women that I was dating at the time loved it, absolutely loved the body that I'd created for myself. But that was for that program. But then I've also done another program where it was more about the nutrition side of things, focusing on eating the right kind of food and not having to necessarily do this crazy high impact intense workout every day and I actually got better results from that so when you're thinking about uh doing your fitness stuff you do have to consider the nutrition side of things as well and I would also say that that is in parallel to your fitness so if you're thinking about uh you know really working on your um your your body and you want to get great results with that, then you also have to consider what kind of food you're putting into your body that's going to change the results that you get. And this could also include things like how much water are you having as well? Are you hydrating yourself enough? Um, and uh, and are you eating healthy foods or are you like constantly snacking on rubbish? So they are big things to consider, but they really are integrated. And I would say if you can focus on the nutrition even more so than the fitness, but you don't have to be going every day to the gym. You can go like two to three times a week, but even doing that for four to six months, along with just a very healthy diet for four to six months, at the very least, I mean, ideally you'd want to be continuous with it, that you will get fantastic results from that and you will get the body that you want that will be very attractive to women so i kind of sort of jumped onto the other side of the diagram there so so that is that um the next one i would say let's let's do fashion so this is one that also tends to confuse uh, a lot of guys because they think oh i have to buy stuff like every season and uh you know i don't know what i'm gonna spend and and whatnot and it's gonna take ages to figure stuff out to be honest, if you were to go to a professional stylist or if you were to go into a store that has the style that you're looking for and actually ask the staff to help you, honestly, you could fix your entire fashion and wardrobe of sorts within one day. You could go out tomorrow, spend maybe let's say a grand or two and have an amazing wardrobe that could last you for like two, three years and be incredibly smart and be wearable for every kind of occasion. You could certainly cover like the full spectrum of what's necessary for a really good fashion sense for uh, nighttime, for dates, uh, for daytime, for work environments, uh, for casual wear, for going out, socializing with friends and stuff. Easily, you could do all of that within a day. And OK, maybe if you haven't got the opportunity to give yourself this uh, this pretty woman sort of experience, then we could even go as far to say like seven days. 
that you could do it within a week. You could make all of the changes that you need and do it within a week quite easily. Um, so the next one that I would probably say is, uh, if I just click this. So the next one, let's, let's say, is sleep. So I'm purposely leaving uh, the social life and cold approach in last for a reason. So sleep is a really, really important one because getting the best kind of sleep can really help you with your anxiety and focus and certainly with memory and concentration as well, which can make all the difference for when you are going out and socializing and meeting people. When you've had a good night's sleep, it's so much easier to have a con um, have a, co a conversation with someone and concentrate and mumble. mumble muddling my words now, uh, not on purpose, I swear. Um, but you can have so much better uh, communications with people and that can certainly make a big impact on the results that you get if you are looking to actually date people through cold approaching or even just through socializing. Otherwise, what tends to happen if you've had really bad sleep, um, and maybe I'm sure you've probably experienced this yourself, but even in like a work environment, it can be very difficult to concentrate. You become very reliant on uh, on coffee, which isn't always great. If you are having like two, three cups a day, that's way too much. Uh, tying that in even with nutrition. I found as well that if you, believe it or not, if you actually have less caffeine, you will be less anxious. So consider the possibility that you could be sensitive to caffeine. But um, that's for you to discuss really with a nutritionist or to experiment for yourself. Like what is your life like maybe for a week or two if you're not having any caffeine in your body? So, um, but with sleep, I would say realistically to really work on your sleep and have a great sleeping pattern and stuff, which does take time. Um, I would say it takes probably about two to three months to uh to get really really comfortable with that because you have to train yourself out of things and they aren't going to be an overnight success you will find you'll slip back into some bad habits um that is unfortunately the thing that when you've got a bad routine in place um you have to do what you can to break away from it but every now and again it will kind of creep back um but two to three months i think is a really really good thing uh to do um, next one, hygiene and grooming. So this one is just making sure that you are constantly staying, uh, fresh and clean all the time, as well as you're getting your hair cut and you're getting trims and stuff. So you are looking as good as possible. Now with this one, believe it or not, you can also do literally, um, tomorrow, uh, you can do within a day and then maintenance of that would probably be every six weeks for a really, really good haircut. If you invest in just going somewhere that can take really good care of you as well, then absolutely that will make all of the difference with how you look and how you present yourself to women and just give you a couple of extra points with, um, with how you are uh, giving that first impression. So it's just something really to, to consider with that. Um, but sometimes as well, you know, some people have beards, some people don't have beards, they're clean shaven. Some people have long hair, some people have short hair, some people have no hair. So this one would really be just one that's applicable. But, uh, you know, if you're going to be meeting people, do make sure that, that you are washing and staying fresh uh, all the time. Uh, I hate to say it, but I have met guys who don't like shower before they go on a date, which is a bit dirty really um and then th and the same when they go out and practice cold approaching and meeting people as well so yeah just just consider that uh the next one so social life and hobbies okay so so this one is also going to be just down to are you someone who is open to socializing do you have a social life already do you have a group of friends already are you kind of a bit uh, of a loner and actually it would be great for you to be part of a group and of a community then uh then it's not a bad idea to actually develop a social life for yourself as well um and you can again go out tomorrow and do that um but what is great is at the very if you can going out once a week i'll, do, I'll type it i'll type it instead once a week uh, 
bloody hell, I can't spell today. Um, or socializing at least once a month. If you can do that, that can be so beneficial in just helping you to uh, develop your confidence um, because at least you are putting yourself in environments that's forcing you out of your comfort zone to talk to new people on a regular basis. And of course, when you're socializing, you're going to make friends very naturally, as well as you'll probably meet other people who were also looking to work on their confidence and overcome their social anxiety. And the likelihood is you'll probably even meet women through social groups and having hobbies and interests of things in common. So it's possible that you might have a dating life just simply through putting yourself out there and joining particular communities. Now, the last one uh, that I've uh, uh, that I've left here, which is the cold approaching. So this one is obviously just a very particular one because it's a uh, you can do it to have a great dating life, but it's not also necessary as long as you are putting yourself out there and you are socializing. But cold approaching at least does give you uh, better options of women that you can um, that you can approach and that you can speak to, or it at least opens up your choice of people that you're attracted to. So you're not then letting opportunities go by. If you see someone, you talk to them, and if you are compatible, then obviously things can happen. Now with this one, uh, what I have seen over the years, uh, it's been a case of uh, if guys have uh, a lot of free time. Let's say let's just let's say they've got like a sabbatical thing going on. I've seen guys completely change their dating life in an amazing way, and we're talking like beginners who couldn't even like hold eye contact with strangers. I'd say between one to three, one to three months is amazing. That's usually been the success with that, and. For guys who probably don't have all the time in the world, maybe they've only got like the weekends free or something. I would say for them, they've been able to do it between more realistically six and 12 months. It wouldn't really be fair for me to say that they've been able to do it in three to six months because you that that extra bit of momentum there um, can be, I think, a little bit more difficult to to get. It's and it and it varies also on a case by case basis if guys have that confidence or not. Um, but I would say though that really on average, if a guy were to just constantly be practicing, maybe for a couple of hours every week, going out and doing cold approaching, there's no reason why within a year he could get really good with uh, with his confidence uh, because he'd overcome so many rejections or um, socially anxious situations that he would find himself in. Um, he would overcome a lot of the hurdles that he would have with his conversation skills and whatnot. Um, and, uh, and yeah, and I think just overall, he would have so many experiences during that time that would just elevate his confidence to a point that he just wouldn't be phased and he could very comfortably just implement cold approaching in his uh, normal everyday life. Hopefully, you know, with all of those things there, you can kind of see just how how much time it can take for you to work on this more holistic side of your attractive lifestyle and where you can build your confidence um, and have, you know, a really great dating life. But there are extra things that you can certainly do that can help speed this process up of you becoming more confident. So one of which, which I do think does tend to get overlooked a lot, is the fact that guys are resorting to watching pornographic material and visiting all sorts of naughty websites to get their high rather than going out and practice talking to women and reward, getting the reward of having, you know, a really great interaction with someone if it, you know, materializes or evolves into a romantic relationship. So the problem when you are just relying on uh, watching this content online is that you are getting this reward uh, uh, ironically pumped into your system without you necessarily putting in any of the hard work. And of course, that 
not only is going to destroy your confidence because you're not, you know, you're not developing this social side of you. All you're doing is literally creating a very addictive situation that is only going to cause you performance anxiety in the long run anyway. So one of the things that you can certainly do uh, to build your confidence is to just not watch this sort of content altogether. And what happens is that then you start to fix internally all of the different hormones and the endorphins and, and, and serotonin that gets released in the brain and in the body and you kind of set them back to what they were originally. You give them a bit of a reset and you find then that just from that alone, your testosterone increases and that also normalizes to what it should be. And you'll find that you'll feel less tired. You'll feel that you'll actually get more concentration. Your focus will be there more and you will just naturally just have more confidence from what this testosterone has done. And when you're then putting yourself out there, whether it even be through socializing or through doing cold approaching, the people or women that you're speaking to will feel that confidence. They will feel that masculine energy that you are now uh, being filled with or what's flowing through your body. So if you're watching, you know, pornographic material online, you're only numbing these uh, these experiences or you're numbing the senses and not allowing yourself to be confident. So that can also play an effect in how long it takes for you to build your confidence as opposed to how quickly you can do it. So that is something that you do need to recognize. Are you watching a lot of pornographic material? And if you are, then you need to try and wean yourself off of it or certainly stop. If you can do that, I would say within... Well, I think when to normalize your testosterone, it can take 10 days. But if you really want to see the results of what happens by not watching pornography, six months is a great window of time for that. And obviously carry on going. If you've managed to not watch any of that content for that long, keep on going. Don't resort back. And I can promise you, not only will you be more confident with women, but your sexual performance will be so much better as well. You know, all of this erectile dysfunction stuff will be a thing of the past for you if you find that you have that kind of problem because you're just, well, let's just say you're training your body to um, uh, to experience a euphoria very quickly, to, you know, just to keep it PG on, uh, on YouTube. Um, so that would be one potential thing. Now, I mentioned another one about with um, therapy work and meditation as well. So just with therapy, you know, that you can, uh, that depending on what the issues are that you've got, uh, depending on what kind of professional maybe you need to seek, uh, depending on the traumas or anxieties that you've got as well, that can vary on, you know, how many sessions potentially you need to have with someone. But ultimately with that, um, you can end up booking a session for in like a week or two weeks time, or depending on the availability of the therapist you're going to. And they usually then say anyway, to have that second and third session the week or two weeks afterwards. And most therapists don't really tend to see you for that, uh, for any more than that. That's usually it. So if you do need help with your anxiety, then something like with therapy, you could get all of your problems um set, well maybe not fixed because it's not fair to say that it's you know that you're going to cure your problems but to actually face your fears and problems and overcome them and overcome whatever that hurdle was that was preventing you from um from taking action and getting better results to essentially just i suppose replace with positive reference experience is what i'm getting at then a couple of weeks you could have all of those problems sorted within a couple of weeks. And then with the meditation side of things, consider that that is a long-term thing. I actually quite like doing the Wim Hof method. And sometimes I try and do that sort of a couple of times a week. And I will do that every week or every other week or any time that I'm certainly feeling quite anxious. That is a great thing for me personally to do. Now, there are other meditations out there. You've got like mindfulness stuff. You've got deep breathing. Uh, I think there are like ice baths and stuff. You've got doing yoga. 
um, pranayama, and you know, there's there's loads of options, you know. And in fact, even with them, on top of that, you could even do like art stuff. I've known people who've gone and done like painting or or sculpturing or even things around music to help relax them. But consider that maybe even like part of a hobby or having a social life. And even if it's not about being sociable with that and you're doing that in the comfort of your home, just try and make that a regular thing as part of like your weekly, daily life. Um, so even that indefinitely, you will find that you will just be so much calmer and more relaxed by just learning how to take control of your anxiety and managing it which is all really meditation is. It's just learning how to manage your anxiety and your expectations of it. So when those moments do arise where you're anxious, you can deal with it. You know how to deal with it. You're not going to be in panic with it as well. So ultimately, uh, after covering all of these different things and, uh, and speaking about those extra bits that you can speed your process up of building your confidence in dating, what is the overall result? So realistically, I would say that if you have all the time in the world, if you've got some like sabbatical thing going on where you could literally go out, take action tomorrow and start making changes, implementing all of these different things in your life, I can't see why you can't have the best dating life that you want within three to six months, okay? I'm going to just change the color of that just to emphasize that even more. Three to six months, I reckon, for a guy who has the time to go and do it. Now, if you don't have the time to go and do it, you know what I'm going to say here? Six to 12 months. But I find this absolutely amazing that no matter how bad you believe your dating life or lifestyle to be, you could change all of that around a full 180 within 12 months, within a year. And it's why like even in some of my other videos and even when I've done live streams with like Christian um, and even with David as well, I, I've mentioned the fact that don't just think about like what kind of results you're going to get on the day that you go out to practice cold approaching or what's going to happen in the next week or the week after, think about it more in like three months time. Where are you at with your social skills and your confidence with women? Six months time, a year, two years. Think about the long-term goal here. And by doing so, you'll actually see, and hopefully even with this as well, that if you put the time and effort in, you are just future-proofing yourself. You're going to be setting yourself up for having a great dating life and just making these incremental changes. I mean, you if you don't have the opportunity to do all of this, let's say, in the space of a week, spread it out. Take a much more, I'm sure it's an agile approach to things, you know, do one bit first, get it done, tick the box, move on to the next thing, make all the changes, tick the box, move on to the next thing. And some of these things are just uh, more habitual as well. So like with your fitness and nutrition, well, take all of the rubbish out of your house that you eat and replace it with all healthy stuff. And just make sure you've only got healthy stuff in the house to force you to eat only good things. And what will happen? Eventually that will become part of your routine and it will be second nature to you. It won't be a problem to then eat and drink and uh, and whatnot with all of the healthy things. Same with fitness as well. It can be really daunting going to the gym on, for, on the first day and not being confident with it, but go regularly. And if you're unsure of what to do without having the hiccups, um, see a personal, oh, there you go. There it came out. Um, see a personal trainer, seek help, get the advice and knowledge and expertise that you need to create a structure, create a strategy for the gym and what you need to do and just follow that. Um, same with like the grooming and stuff. Go spend a bit of money, go to a hairstylist who eventually can help you to find the perfect haircut, facial hair look that's suitable for you 
and find out what is the best way from them to ma uh, maintain that kind of look. Do it. Same with the fashion. If you don't know what to do, speak to an expert, speak to a fashion consultant, speak to one of the professionals working in the fashion shop that you want to get the, uh, the particular style and look from. It is their job to be able to pick out stuff. And if you say, look, I've got a budget, I want this, these sort of styles, can you help me create a combination of clothing so I can mix and match bits? They will help you with that. And better yet, if you're someone who does want to kind of shop on a budget, why not go do the shopping spree, pick and find out all of the things that you want to buy and then wait for when the sale's on. And the day that the sales happen, if you can try and catch it instantly, buy everything that you need and you will probably then get everything half the price. Maybe, okay, maybe maybe like 40% off of what you would have paid if you would have just gone out and bought it there and then, if you can play the patience game with that. But again, within a weekend, you could change your fashion and you could suddenly look absolutely amazing. It's one of those that if you're willing to spend just a bit of money on your fashion, that stuff will last you years anyway. Consider like if you spend two grand on clothes, that could last you like three years, two, three years which is brilliant to have a look that makes you look so impressive to people and very high status. Why wouldn't you get great reactions from that? And it's kind of worth its own weight in gold at that point. Sleep as well, very habitual. Um, but with that, the social life and cold approaching, obviously with those things, you have to put yourself out there. Also ruling out the routine of uh, watching pornography that you have to train yourself with. Very habitual, but at least it's in the comfort of your own home to try and worry about that. And as for like the therapy stuff and also the meditation stuff as well, that is also about just finding the right person and the right particular meditation style that you're after that's gonna help you to learn to maintain and manage your anxiety. So I really hope that this was, uh, was beneficial for you and it gave you a bit more context into how long it takes to really make a change for your dating life. But three to 12 months to completely turn your life around and have an amazing dating life, I would say is really not that long at all. No matter where you are in your life, however old you are and whatnot, three to 12 months is amazing. And it, I've seen people who have been, uh, who've been like the worst case scenario change their life in that kind of period of time and they've had no regrets from it. But if there's one thing that I will certainly leave you with is a quote that I had heard years ago. I don't know who it's from, but the phrase that I'd heard or the, or the, the quote that I'd heard was the best time to plant a tree was 75 years ago and the second best time is now. There's no point living with, with regret invest in yourself and within a year there is no reason why you can't be in a place that you are incredibly happy uh, and truly living uh, in a lifestyle that you've always wanted and I know it can be very difficult to imagine what that life is like but that is kind of like part of the journey you have to enjoy the process and experience this hero's journey that you've got to go on to come out the other end as the better person. So consider just investing in yourself, consider investing in these things and future-proof yourself. And remember, three to 12 months, you could be in a very different place to where you are now. So if you can, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and certainly I would be open to hearing of any other uh, video ideas or queries or questions and stuff that you have so I can advise you more specifically on things in your dating life that can certainly get you results better and faster. Um, I'd love to hear in the comments below as well your thoughts on this video and are there any particular areas that you're struggling with that you would just love to get a bit of advice on and maybe I can hopefully point you in the right direction so you can get on, make the changes and already start seeing the results and getting an attractive lifestyle. And if you are struggling with any of these and especially doing it on your own, by all means, do have a look on my website. 
I offer life coaching, I offer therapy, my integral eye movement therapy, and I also offer something called dating desensitization therapy. And with each of these things, I help you to face your social anxiety as well as help to hold you accountable and take action and responsibility for your life. So hopefully you can get to where you want to be much quicker than what you were expecting. So again, thank you so much for watching this video. It really means the world to me uh, having you guys watching this. I've been Dan, that dating anxiety guy. And of course, stay tuned for more videos coming from me.